countries have been trading arms for hundreds of years. Global arms trading is of increasing political interest because it reflects global defence and security structures. As such, research into the topic is ongoing internationally. The COST collaboration is analysing data on arms trading in a novel way, using network models. Countries and their trade relations can be considered as networks. The states are the nodes and a link between two nodes exists when there's a transfer. While the analysis of trade networks is more of a common topic, the analysis of arms trades as a security-related network is a new concept. The trade networks of major conventional weapons have changed over the years, especially after the end of the Soviet Union, which gave birth to a new global order. Another example of the evolution of the arms trade can be taken from the Norwegian Initiative on Small Arms Transfer at the Peace Research Institute in Oslo. The Institute collects information about the international transfer of pistols, guns and ammunition, and their data has demonstrated an increase in network complexity over time. Researchers can use this data to model arms transfers and draw predictions from the results. However, sometimes transfers may be likely to occur, but are not picked up in the data. Networks can be directed or non-directed. There are various configurations of directed networks that can be used to depict arms transfers between countries. Network models can also include time windows to calculate if the model over predicts imports or exports of arms. Data collected by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute provides a useful illustration of the variation between countries. We can use a type of analysis called principal component analyses to look at this further. Each country is given a value for a particular component, and this component is given a definition. For example, a high score for component 1 shows countries with a high tendency to export arms, and a high score for component 2 exhibits countries which have increased their exports over time. We can also incorporate political and economic factors into the statistical analysis. There may be country-specific policies. For example, Japan withdrew itself from the arms trading network in the Cold War period. Germany and Canada maintain relationships with chosen trade partners, while the UK and China look for new partners. Network modelling of arms trading means we can use statistical tools to start answering questions such as which countries are more likely to trade with each other and why. We can delve into what kind of weapons are being bought and how many are being traded, and where there should be trade but none is reported. Network modelling also sheds light on the driving forces behind trading and helps us decipher what we can learn about global power shifts. We also want to understand arms trading because it's a largely unknown and constantly changing field. Countries that have a lot of arms may not be the most aggressive ones and network modelling helps us uncover the driving forces behind arms trading and its impact on conflicts. Research into global arms trading is ongoing, and by using a combination of old and new data, we aim to remain as accurate as possible while studying this delicate and ever-changing topic.